Hello Internet, my name is Dan Howell and this is the story of my hamster. For my 12th birthday, I decided I wanted a pet. We'd had some family pets before, we had a dog, we had some fish, but this was to be the first pet that was truly mine to stay in my room to look after a life to be responsible for, you know? And I decided I wanted a hamster. I know, boring choice, but I just wanted the classic hamster experience. I didn't want a fucking leopard gecko. So my mum takes me to the pet shop and I stare into the box filled with hamsters and they all seemed pretty happy, all playing and jumping on top of each other, but in the corner, stood up on its hind legs, was a hamster with completely orange fur and jet black eyes. This hamster wasn't necessarily scared or sick looking, it just seemed like it was thinking almost, and I stared into its eyes, and it seemed to stare back at me, and I knew that was my hamster. So I took it home, and what did I name it? Suki. S-U-K-I. No idea why, it just sounded kind of cool and Asian, I guess. I was 12, there is no explanation. So I put it in this big plastic tank that I bought it, filled with sawdust, with a little water bottle and a food bowl, and I was so damn excited, because the brand of hamster tank I bought came with all of these extensions that you could buy, and I got addicted. Like, you know when you're playing The Sims or Pokemon or any RPG and you start to get actual feelings of satisfaction from this other thing's life being successful? It was like that. I was living vicariously through my hamster's house. I bought the hamster revolving restaurant extension, I bought the purple hamster nightclub extension, it was like a house out of cribs, it was off the hook. It was the only thing I cared about and I spent all of my money on it, to the extent that my family actually got concerned and had to stage an intervention. I'd be like, Grandma, Grandma, what chores can I do to get money? I will wash the car, I will clean the dishes, I will scrub the freaking toilets. And she'd be like, Daniel, I love that you're being so helpful, but I'd prefer if you spent the money on yourself. You see, they were aware of the fact that the hamster probably didn't have the intellectual capacity to appreciate that it now had a seesaw in its log cabin extension, but I wasn't having any of it. So I will give you ten pounds, but you have to promise not to spend it on the hamster. Okay, Grandma. Fucking water park extension! Oh yeah! I loved my hamster. We used to sit on the bed and play Xbox together as it chewed through my pillow. I used to make little obstacle courses for it on my bedroom floor. I used to put it in its hamster ball and then catch it just before it rolled down the stairs and killed itself. They really were the best of times. But then, after a few months, something started to change. Over time, my hamster seemed to get less energetic. It wouldn't want to climb up and ride down its slide. It didn't want to play tug of war for a carrot anymore. And I couldn't understand why. Like, was it sick? No. So what was wrong? I remember one day I got up to give it a little poke on the nose through the grate and it did something that she had never done before. She bit me. I mean, it probably just thought I was trying to feed it something, but I chose to apply a lot more meaning to this. Is it angry? Have I done something wrong? Why would it want to bite me? I couldn't get these thoughts out of my head as I went to sleep that night. And the next day was the first time it happened. I just got home from school, ran up the stairs, chucked my bag on the bed, looked over to a tank. The lid wasn't on the tank. Sawdust was overflowing onto my desk and the hamster was nowhere to be seen. What happened? Did someone do it? Did the dog do it? Did the dog eat it? Red alert! My whole family scrambled looking for it, closed all the doors, shut all the windows, pulled back all the furniture, when about an hour later I found it behind my bed, shaking in the corner. How did she get there? Who was responsible for her getting out? I put her back in the tank and tried to work it out, when no less than two hours later, it happened again. But this time... I saw. Suki began to push all of the sawdust in her tank into one corner. She then climbed on top of the pile of sawdust that she made and pressed her hands against the roof. She did it herself. I did not expect this. Hamsters are not supposed to be that intelligent, but oh no, I'd gone and bought the fucking Harry Houdini of hamsters. So I was stood right there and our eyes were locked together in a standoff and I just gave her this look. Like, don't you fucking dare. Pop right, that's it. So I got this fat ass Bible and whacked it down on the lid. And just in case, an encyclopedia, an atlas of the world, and the entire illustrated Chronicles of Narnia hardback. I couldn't lift all those books at the same time now. So I was pretty sure this solved the issue. But that night at about 2am, 
I woke up to some rustling. I remember I reached for my Goosebumps torch, which I had by my bedside table, just in case of burglars or demons that may try to murder me in the night, and pointed it over at the tank. And there she was again, sawdust all in a pile, climbed on top, hands against the ceiling, and I just thought, surely not. Surely there is no way in hell that that tiny hamster can pop, slide, crash. I could not believe that that just happened. I was standing with my mouth open. Did I buy a fucking radioactive hamster? Like, I know tiny animals are generally really strong in proportion to humans, but I was like, this thing could probably break my legs if it ran into me fast enough. What? Needless to say, my family didn't enjoy going on a hamster scavenger hunt at 3am that night. And the next day, I wrapped the entire thing in layer and layer of duct tape. There was no way she was getting out of that, and she knew it. On one hand, I felt like I'd won this ongoing battle, like, ha, I win, you lose, can't escape now. So then why all of a sudden did I feel so bad? Suki had stopped trying to escape, but... It was almost as if she'd stopped trying altogether. She wasn't eating, she wasn't neatly keeping all of her poop in the poop cave that she'd made inside the nightclub extension. And this was when I finally realized what it had been trying to teach me all along. The value of freedom. I bought a self-aware hamster, okay? Most humans aren't even aware of their place in the universe, but this hamster was. My world came crashing down around me. She just wanted to be free and I was the one who imprisoned her. She is a sentient life form, and I am the person responsible for stripping her of her freedom. I didn't expect this. I just wanted a freaking hamster, a little cute fluffy thing for me to feel really excited about for a few months before I inevitably lose interest and feel annoyed by my responsibility to it, and then it dies a few years later and I learn about death. But that's not what I got. There I was thinking, hamsters must love being in tanks, so I'll get a really big one, but nope. It was a prison. And it doesn't matter if a prison has a revolving restaurant or a nightclub. Well, actually. It's still a prison. I felt morally reprehensible. I had no idea what to do. I mean, I felt like I should almost do what it wanted and release it, but I couldn't do that. There's dogs and cars and it's cold and where would it find food? It is not meant for the wilderness of suburban England, so really the tank is the best place for it. Plus, you know, it could have been bought by someone who wouldn't have looked after it, or it could have just died in the pet shop. But did the hamster know this? Did it care? Would it rather die a free hamster than just live in comfortable imprisonment for the rest of its life? I fell into a depression to mimic my hamsters. Now when I looked into its eyes, it's like we were truly seeing each other for the first time. It knew that I knew, and I knew that it knew. And finally, I realized why I picked that hamster of all the hamsters in the pet shop. But then that night, the very night I had this realization, it escaped for good. I remember it now. I wake up in the morning and in the corner of my eye I see a trail of sawdust across my bedroom floor. I bolt up, look at the tank, and she had somehow managed to unscrew one of the pipes that connect the rooms together. This didn't surprise me, but I got the whole family up and looking behind beds, looking behind toilets and sinks. My dad even took out panels in the kitchen in case it had ran behind the oven. But no matter how hard we looked for hours, we didn't find her and I never saw her again. At the end of the story, was I sad that she escaped? Yes. But at the same time, I felt happy. Happy that she was finally free. And I will never know whether she only made it two meters out of the door or whether she lived a long and happy life and had a whole bunch of rabid hamster babies. But I found peace in knowing that she got the freedom that she craved. And I thank her. When I got this hamster, I was a boy but it turned me into a man. If I didn't have a little furry orange ball to make me question the meaning of freedom and what it is to truly live, I may not have been the person that I am today. For what she told me that I am reminded of every time I see a hamster, a cage, a purple nightclub, that merely existing in comfort is not living. And if you really want to find happiness, you need to have the courage to break out Find your own freedom and live life on your terms. And that is the story of my hamster.